Welcome to Hopewell Heights, I'm Steph, and today I'm going to take you along as I make dinner. I have about 40 minutes to get dinner made. It's just kind of one of those days where we have a lot going on and I have a little bit of time, but I always, I'm not a meal prepper, but I do always keep meat thawed out in the fridge. That way I've got something, I've got something to start with and I can always come up with something. By the way, if you hear chicks chirping, I have three new baby chicks. Uh, today's hatch day. There's three in here. Ooh. Um, there's three in here right now. So, lots going on today, but let's get started because like I said, I do not have much time. I'm going to be making meatballs and gravy. This is one of my favorites. It's definitely a comfort food type meal and it doesn't take that much time. It's really simple. Just a twist on the classic old meat and potatoes. All right, I've got my potatoes here. So I'm going to start just peeling my potatoes and I'll get the mashed potatoes going first. Now, I'm gonna show you how I make mashed potatoes. I do it all in one pot. I do not boil my potatoes. I just put my potatoes in a pot, in a Dutch oven, whatever you got here. And then add in a little bit of butter and I pour just enough milk to cover, not, well, not quite cover. You don't want it to totally cover. About, right there and then i cover them and turn it on low and just let them simmer while i'm finishing up whatever i have to do it takes maybe 20 minutes 25 minutes something like that just come back and check them like after 15 minutes and with the fork and see if they're soft enough to where you can mash them but this is the easiest way to make mashed potatoes and they are really really good because then all you have to do is take your potato masher or whatever you use and just mash them right here and then they're ready to go. Here is my pan of meat from the fridge. I've got a roast out. I'll use that tomorrow. And here I've got two pounds of ground beef. So this is what I'm going to be working with for my meatballs. This bowl is extra gigantic, probably way unnecessarily big, but it's clean. So this is what I'm going to use. Ground beef is going to go into the mixing bowl. Now I need to add an egg. Got lots of eggs, always. And for breadcrumbs, I just have a bunch of really dry bread. This is, yeah, very, very dry bread that would not be good for sandwiches, so I crumble this up. And I'm going to add about a fourth cup of milk. No time to measure today. So, a little bit of milk there, not too much. When you're making meatballs, you don't want to add too much milk because then they'll just fall apart. They need to be able to hold their shape. I'm going to cut up an onion and a few cloves of garlic to add to the meatballs. I'm not measuring anything really exactly today because I just want to show you guys how I cook when I really am just doing life and I don't have all the time in the world. I really like to stick to things that, recipes that I can memorize or that are just really simple and I can kind of, you know, wing it and, and make something up. So that's, that's what I'm showing you today. But I will link this recipe with exact measurements in the description. So you can check the description and head over to my blog if you want the exact recipe. For seasoning, I am just going to add a teaspoon of salt, a half teaspoon of nutmeg, and then about a quarter teaspoon of allspice. Then just mix everything up really well. My meatballs were pretty, let's just call it textured today because I genuinely did not have that much time. <laughs> Got a big skillet heating up back there so now i'm going to shape my meatballs and then i will cook these so i've got my hot skillet here now i'm going to cook the meatballs i'm just going to cook them for brown them for like one or two minutes on each side and then i'll set them aside on a plate so that i can make the gravy
I am the type of person that likes to clean up as I go. That way I have less of a mess at the very end and after we're finished eating then there's just not much left to do. So while I'm waiting for my meatballs to brown on one side, I'm just cleaning up the kitchen a little bit and then I will turn them and let them cook on the other side a little bit before I make the gravy. While my meatballs and mashed potatoes are cooking, I'm gonna go out to the garden and pick some parsley. My meatballs are finished. I'm going to put them on this plate and just set them to the side so that I can work on making the gravy. Now I'm going to make a roux and make the gravy. And I'm just gonna do it right here in the same skillet. So when you make a roux, it's just uh, butter and flour and it's a one to one ratio. So I've got about, about four tablespoons of butter here and then I'll do like a fourth cup of flour and that should be just fine. Now my butter is browned. I'm going to add a fourth cup of flour and whisk this in to make my roux. Once your flour is whisked in, you are going to want to let it bubble for a few minutes before adding any liquid. I've got some beef bone broth here, so I'm going to use all this. This is a quart, so four cups, I believe. Four cups in a quart. So I'm just, just gonna slowly pour this into my roux and whisk the whole time, and this will make the base of the gravy. When you're making any kind of sauce that has a roux base, it's important to pour your liquid slowly and whisk the whole time. My gravy is thickening up really well, so I'm just going to add maybe like a quarter cup of cream, something like that, and then some salt and pepper, and the gravy will be finished. So, add some pepper, about a half teaspoon of salt, And now the meatballs that I sat to the side are going to go back into the skillet with the gravy and finish cooking in there. I think my mashed potatoes are finished, so I'm just going to check them with a fork and then mash those while I wait for the meatballs and the gravy to cook down. I'm telling you, this really is the easiest way to make mashed potatoes. You will save lots of dishes and time. I'm just going to add in some salt and pepper, just keeping it very simple. So, a teaspoon or so, salt. Pepper. And I'm going to mix this up and the mashed potatoes are ready. At this point, you could add a little bit more milk or butter or sour cream or whatever you want if you want your mashed potatoes to be a little more thin, but this is just fine. Since I'm going to be um, putting meatballs and gravy on top, then I don't wanna do that. So I think the meatballs are ready too. All I have to do is cut up parsley and I am finished. meatballs here and the gravy it probably simmered for maybe 10 minutes not long for the gravy to really thicken up and for the meat to cook through and then I have my mashed potatoes too I need to get plates made for John and the boys right away because they need to eat and get out the door and once they leave then I'll take my time and the rest of us will eat
Okay, perfect timing. The baby just woke up and I am finished. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to click subscribe for more videos on motherhood, homesteading, and life on our farm. How is it, buddy?